Congo is uh, a place where there is more rape taking place than uh, any other area uh, of its size in the world. It's uh, sometimes the uh, eastern Congo is known as the rape capital of the world. Rape is, is used as a weapon of mass destruction in eastern Congo. It's used by militias to attack villages and destroy them, to destroy them economically, politically, socially, and psychologically. There's been mass violence there for 20 years, with about 4 million people killed. Mass rape uh, fosters a, uh, a breakdown of the community in its entirety, and that starts with a norm in uh, Congolese society, in most of these traditional societies in the Congo, uh, according to which men must divorce their wives if they've been raped and can't marry a woman who's been raped. So in early 2014, we established a new NGO Restore the Villages Project. This project will do five interventions in villages that have suffered mass rape attacks. Uh, we will do a, a medical intervention where the women are treated for physical trauma and where they are treated for any potential STDs. Some of the husbands are concerned that their wives have STDs. This will take away that, that concern. Of course, it's crucial to the women's health. Normally, we have kits. Nous avons des kits préconditionnés et ce kit se donne bien sûr en fonction du temps que la femme a fait avant de se présenter au centre. Donc nous pouvons donner la prise en charge contre, donc pour prévenir certaines pathologies. Second, we're doing a psychosocial intervention, embedding a psychologist and two social workers in each village that suffered a mass rape attack to work with both the victims, their husbands, their fathers-in-law, uh, others uh, in the village to try to uh, work through some of the psychological and social uh, issues uh, surrounding rape so that the family stays together. Third, we are doing a microfinance intervention where we are creating a women's cooperative uh, in each of these villages, taking uh, mostly uh, women victims, uh, a few non-victims so that there are no jealousies uh, or reduced jealousies in the village, and providing them with capital and training so that they can learn a business or learn uh, a skill uh, that they can use to remain engaged in the village's economy. If they remain engaged in the village's economy, they're integrated into the village by definition, so their expulsion uh, from the village is, uh, isn't taking place. Sina maisha mzuri, ni ba ba maskin, ba si ba tajiri ba tayenda. Mama naenda, anaenda na tafuta fosombe, ba na kutana kule kushamba. Kama naenda na tafuta makuni, ba na ba naenda kule kushamba. Ni. Kunjia ya kuza, mnaenda urangua vitu, mnaakua kuzisha. Juu mamotu ilisha kuhu. Lakini kutembea sivuza. The fourth intervention is an ecumenical one, where uh, we are having uh, a Catholic priest, a Protestant minister, a Muslim sheikh uh, come into the village and preach what those religions preach about this kind of thing, compassion, the sanctity of family, the sanctity of marriage, uh, and uh, try to impress these norms uh, upon the villagers. These villagers are, uh, are very religious. If you want to see and to know the spirit of the village in our areas here, you have to go to the church. <laughs> I was 
talking to them. They are, they are very happy and they would like such, such activities to continue because it's the first time that uh, people and uh, church representatives have been together to stay stop to SGBV, sexual based abuses and violence. The fifth and final intervention is a judicial intervention. We are working with the American Bar Association Rule of Law Initiative to bring a mobile court trial to the villages where the mass rape has occurred when a perpetrator or a person responsible for these mass atrocities can be found. Uh, and they have been found. Uh, various commanders of these militias uh, have been put on trial in the past and are going to continue to be put on trial, but now in or near the villages where the atrocities occurred. We're hopeful that this will uh, uh, impress upon the villagers uh, that their, uh, their justice can be done, uh, but that also uh, in, uh, that by identifying the perpetrator as the culprit instead of the victim as being somehow responsible or somehow um, uh, sullied uh, or a source of shame, that instead the blame will go where it belongs, and that is uh, on the perpetrator. I know. Our project is different from other projects that are being done in the Congo in several respects. First, we are serving a territory that is currently very underserved, uh, Fizi territory, uh, where these interventions simply aren't available, including even the medical intervention. The second, we are serving not just the victim, but the village as a whole. It's not just the female victim who is harmed by this, but uh, our past research has shown that it's the village as a whole. Third. We are very carefully assessing the impact of each of our interventions. We're doing surveys before and after the interventions to see what their effects are. And our plan is to then fine tune the interventions and the combination of interventions so that we come up with an optimal way to spend the resources we have to try to dampen the, uh, these uh, adverse effects of mass rape. The Restore the Villages project is indebted to Diana Jenkins not only because she is the benefactor whose help has allowed us to launch this project, but also because of her ideas about how to intervene in a society that suffered uh, mass violence. Uh, based on her own experiences, uh, those ideas, those sensibilities have been invaluable in planning our work.